What is up folks? In today's video we're going to be working on the Dodge Viper GTS ACR edition in this case, but if you have a Gen 2, it is going to be the same principles and the same procedure. So what we're doing is we are installing a 2003 and up brake kit on the front of this. We already tackled the back, so if you guys haven't checked out that video, we've already converted the rear to 2003 and up brake calipers so we have that in a full separate video so check down in the description or i'll link it above here you guys can check that video out but today's video we're focusing on the front so just on a you know side note these calipers are pretty small they're better than the rears for the gen 2 but they are a brembo caliper a four piston but it's a little bit small so we have the 2003 and up calipers so these are the factory viper calipers and uh we have loaded calipers with the pads all ready to go the other thing we have is ipsco brackets so these are going to allow us to bolt this onto the front of this car so Thankfully on the front, it's just a bolt on affair. We unbolt all the stock stuff, bolt on the, all of these brackets, comes with all the hardware, comes with our instructions, and we're good to go. Whereas the rear, we had to do some cutting, not a big deal, but um, if you guys haven't seen that video, definitely check that out. We had to do cut off some brackets. <laughs> to make room for the new brackets, but on the front, luckily, none of that has to happen. So anyways, we got our IPSCO kit. Everything that I'm using, you guys, I will link in the description below. So IPSCO bracket kit, also have the StopTech uh, brake, stainless steel brake lines. So I'll link that down below. I do also still have this proportioning valve, which we won't get to in today's video. I'm gonna do that in a separate video along with bleeding the brakes. So if you guys are wondering, I am going to need to reduce the brake line pressure going to the rear. So once we have those huge calipers, which we now do in the rear, we're gonna have too much line pressure going to the rear. It'll lock up the rear. So we're gonna have to dial that back and that Willwood proportioning valve will get that done for us. So with this being a 2000 model, it doesn't have ABS. So it should be fairly straightforward, but that's a whole other subject. And just so you guys know, I have two brand new rotors here. We are gonna be using 14 inch rotors all the way around on this car. So I had to order four 14 inch front rotors. So just so you guys are aware, so they're all front rotors. Um, I will link those down below as well, but just know that you're gonna need four front rotors uh, for this application of putting the SRT brakes on all four corners. Some guys, if you guys are interested, you, there is kits from IPSCO where you can utilize your Brembos on the rear if you don't wanna buy four calipers, so just keep that in mind. But check out his link down below, the IPSCO. You can see all the different options for the conversion kit. Anyways, let's get to work. We're gonna pop these wheels off and we can start taking off our old calipers and uh, rotors and then we can get straight into it and we'll get to work. All right, so wheels are off and now we can get into the meat and potatoes of this job. So let's get the old stuff off. And what we're gonna do is remove our caliper. So you'll see two bolts on the back. So one here, one up here, and also a bolt that's holding on our brake line. And then if you look on this side, you'll see a 13 mil up here and then a 10 that's holding the line on. So. We'll remove all of that stuff. I'm gonna save the brake line for the last bit. So what I'll probably end up doing, honestly, is same as what we did in the back. We'll take this off, we'll set it off to the side and mount our new caliper. We'll put our new line on our caliper and we'll swap the connection and fitting very last. That way we don't introduce a bunch of air into the system for longer periods than we need to. So let's go ahead, take this stuff off. We'll remove all these bolts and swing this out of our way. So now that everything is removed, we actually have to remove also the upper bolt as well that holds on our wheel bearing assembly. And the reason is because we are gonna utilize that. So the way this works is this is gonna go on like such. So that'll go on there. There will be a bolt that goes through into there, another one down below. And you can see these other two bolts which will correspond to this and there as well. And we have all new hardware 
for that. So that is why we have this many bolts here. These are gonna be the bolts that will hold our actual calipers to the brackets, but our hardware, we're gonna have four bolts that are gonna mount this bracket to our spindle. So let's go ahead, get that situated and get those on there. All right, so I have my hardware laid out. So these four, two per side, will be to go into our wheel hub and bearing assembly. And then these two will go where our old caliper bolts went through. So two per side, total of four. Everyone has a washer. We'll put some blue Loctite on there and uh, we'll get them tightened down to spec, which I believe is 45 foot pounds for the smaller ones and then 85 foot pounds for the larger ones. So let's get those done. Okay, so I got my blue Loctite on my hardware. We're good to go. Let's go over there. Okay guys, so I actually have to remove this other bolt here. Jeez. Oh, okay, so now our bracket can go on and see this indent here? This has to face this way because there's that little casting stamp there and I believe it just makes that much room for it there. So we will pass our bolts in through here. So we'll get these just finger tight and then we'll also put in our other two bolts here. This is awesome the way that it's just all bolting together this way. Pretty happy with it. This is uh, quite rewarding after doing the rear for sure. I like the fact that we got the rear done first. And this is just a walk in the park now. Okay, so we'll tighten these down. Like I said, 45 foot pounds and then 85 foot pounds. So let's get those torqued. There's that. We'll do the lower. Okay, and now these are 85 foot pounds. So we'll adjust our torque wrench, change our Allen head to the 10 mil. All right, here goes our rotor, simple enough. Now we put the caliper on. All right, here goes our caliper on. And we'll throw our two supplied bolts in and thread them into the block. And then we can tighten these down. And once we get them snug, we'll torque them. So now we'll torque these down to our 85 foot pounds. There's one. There's two. So they're both torqued. And now it's just our brake line. Okay, so we got this side all on and tight with the exception of the brake line. Let's get the other side to the same state and then we'll work on the brake lines. All right, guys, so same thing. You guys already know the deal. Remove all these bolts that hold the caliper on, the two that hold the line and the hub on, the wheel hub. So remove all these bolts. Remove our caliper. The reason why I'm having to use a pry bar is because our rotor has a lip worn into it from where so there's the caliper there's the rotor let's get our new stuff on there you guys are wanting to see a side-by-side -side comparison of old versus new that is it so looks like it's about an inch bigger so so we're gonna be putting these bigger ones on the front let's grab this throw it on here we go with our bracket again so again indent faces this way We've got our Loctite on here. We will send these bolts in. And you know what I just realized, you guys, is I'm putting these bolts on, but we're probably gonna have to remove one of these for the same bracket on our uh, new brake lines. So just a bit of a hindsight, not a big deal, but I'm realizing we're probably gonna run into that in a few minutes here, but either way. I'll go ahead and thread these in. And let's take a look at our brake lines while we're at it, because I have a feeling we're gonna have to put it there as well. 
So let's pop open our stop tech brake line kit and see what we got. All right, so I had to mess with the line on this side just to figure out what we were gonna do. I ended up coming up with a solution for this. So I'm gonna position the bracket where I think it should go and uh, we're good. I don't have to mess with anything. So I'll go ahead and put the caliper on the air side. Okay, so let's resume. We'll tighten our bolts and I'll show you guys what the solution is for our brake line. Now that I've got that sorted out and planned so let's go ahead and we'll torque these down and we'll torque out these ones. Okay, so I'm just gonna wipe up our surface there and we'll install our new line. It's gonna do it loose for now, just hand tight, nothing crazy. So this is the way this is gonna go. That's gonna go there and then this is gonna go straight there behind you guys in the camera. Okay guys, this ended up being the way we went. So we put the bracket on the bottom here and it's pretty pliable so I just let it kind of mend itself into this shape so it's uh it looks good honestly that's where it should be originally but obviously since we have a bracket here it's stepping that bracket out just ever so slightly i tried putting it on the end but these uh the hub is actually not symmetrical so the distance well you can't see so much from here but the distance between these two and those two being on those four bolt patterns is actually different so I was hoping I could flip the bracket onto the other side there, but it uh, didn't work out quite as planned. So I put it on the bottom. I'm happy with, with the way that is so that now this can reach over to here like so. So it should be good. I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. All right, guys, so that's the bracket there. You probably could do without putting it in there if you didn't want to, but I chose to put it in there just for uh, just extra, you know, securing of the line. So you could probably, like I said, get away with not putting it. It wouldn't do any harm either, but just so it doesn't rub anything, I went ahead and used it. Everything over here is tight, so all of our hardware is tight. Let's go ahead and connect that line over there. We'll connect it and everything should be finalized. We have to do both sides though. So the line is mounted to the frame here. It's held on by 13 mil bolt. And also we're gonna need our 10 millimeter line wrench to remove the hard line. So let's remove those two. And then we have this dedicated bracket, which is nice. One of the nice things about getting actual lines that are made for this vehicle is it comes with a bracketry to replace that. If you went ahead and just got standard stainless steel or braided lines, you would end up just having it hovering over there unless you wanted to make something like this. So I would go ahead and get the Viper dedicated kit for the front and rear like I showed you guys. That way you get all these brackets that support things and you're not left trying to figure this stuff out. So we got that. Let's go ahead. We got a catch pan there. Let's do it. All right, so we tightened the banjo. We also tightened over there and I'm just gonna spray this off with brake clean and let that kind of clean in there because if you guys aren't aware, uh, brake fluid does not like paint. So uh, try not to let that sit on there. I'm sure 99% of people watching this probably would be concerned about leaving brake fluid on something like that. So there we go, she's rinsed off. Let's do the other side. Same deal, we'll disconnect the line, 13 mil, get rid of that, and then we'll put the new stuff on. All right guys, so we have everything installed, everything's tight, our brake calipers are on, both sides are tight, all the lines are tight, and that is the finished product. So I'll be giving you guys some reviews on all this stuff once everything is finished. I still have to put the proportioning valve on there and I also have to bleed the lines of course and get everything back up and running. So that'll be in another video. If you guys wanna check that out, I should have that in the description down below um, at some point here with the proportioning valve. Also check out the other video for the rear brakes if you guys are interested in that. Thanks again to Mark at IPSCO and his products for the conversion kit and those brackets will be down in the description below. So if you guys like this, make sure you give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button guys, what are you guys waiting for? And we'll see you guys on the next video.